Good day, grade 8 learners. Welcome back to Mamina Teaching. You're tuned into your third lesson of Economic and Management Science. In the last two lessons, we were looking at government, but now we will be looking at specifically the national budget. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. How does the national budget work? Well, every year in February, the Minister of Finance delivers the national budget in Parliament. The purpose of this is to explain to Parliament how the government plans to raise money for the next financial year and how they plan to spend that money. In a country like South Africa, it is always important that the minister budgets enough money for important issues such as combating unemployment and therefore reducing poverty, building new infrastructure, and then, of course, spending enough money on education. Now, grade eights, you can imagine if we're speaking about the national budget or the country's budget, we're speaking about a lot of money. Now, we're speaking of billions of rands. Now, stop this video, talk to the class, and discuss how much exactly is a billion? How many zeros does a billion contain? Now, those of you who raised their hands up and said that a billion contains nine zeros, you are correct. Now, let's move on. The national budget is public information and is therefore posted on the government website. Have a look at the government website to see where your tax money is going. So the question is, where does the money come from that the government can use to provide the services? Well, as I said, it's taxes. And now taxes come in two forms direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are taxes derived directly from people's income as well as businesses' income. There are a few types of income tax, such as tax derived from salaries, rental income, and income received from investments. In South Africa, we work with a progressive tax system. This simply means that the more you earn, the more taxes you pay. And so in South Africa, the richer you are, or the richest people in South Africa pay the most taxes, and the poorest most likely pay no taxes. Now let's have a look at an example of a tax bracket in South Africa. As you can see, the left-hand column represents the income groups, and the right-hand column represents the percentage tax that people in a specific group have to pay. You see that the scale moves up in percentages, which shows that the more you earn, the more tax you will pay. Let's move over to indirect taxes. Indirect taxes are taxes that consumers have to pay on their spendings. For example, if a business imports products from abroad, the business will pay import taxes. Other indirect taxes are VAT, which is value added tax. This is tax that we pay on everything we buy in the shops. Apart from a few exceptions, such as basic products like brown bread, fruit, and vegetables. Furthermore, a sin tax is also an example of indirect taxes. A sin tax is a tax that households pay on things or products that the government wants us to use less of. Now, for example, tobacco products, and alcohol. Now let's take a closer look at the government spending on services. Now the government has important focus areas in which it uses its state income on education, housing, health, social grants, transport, and safety. Let's quickly take a look at each of them. When it comes to education, the government is responsible for providing school buildings, furniture, textbooks and teachers etc health the government has the dream of giving all south africans equal access to quality health care by giving patients affordable or even free health care when it comes to housing the department of human settlements is responsible for providing reasonable housing for people as well as public sporting facilities as well as recreational facilities furthermore 
the government also provides social grants to citizens of South Africa who qualify for them. People who are pensioners or have been declared unfit, child allowances in foster care, etc. Millions of rands are spent annually by the government on food schemes, early childhood care centers, child protection services, etc. When it comes to transport, the government is also responsible for public transport, shipping, civil aviation, and rail transport. It is also this department that is responsible for roads, bridges, rail connections, etc. And our last focus area is security, which is important to ensure that the citizens are kept safe. An example is the police and the military force. It is their responsibility to ensure that law and order is enforced so that the country is safe. The government is responsible to ensure that the national budget is in line with its vision and goals to ensure job creation. This ensures that there is economic growth and it ensures that there is equality in the country. With this goal in mind, government spending will be mainly focused on education, infrastructure, and housing. And just like that, grade eights, we have reached the end of lesson three, term one of EMS. Stay tuned for lesson number four, and we'll see you next time. But most importantly, before I leave you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next time.